Is this just good PR, Mr Common, or is this what corporate responsibility looks like in 2022? Oh, good morning, Laura, and nice to be with you. Look, we, we've been focused in, in and around domestic and family violence since 2015, um, definitely uh, partly inspired by Rosie Batty, who was obviously the Australian of the Year uh, at that time. So our approach has continued to deepen and evolve. Uh, we started in crisis response uh, over the last couple of years. We're really focused on financial abuse, which clearly financial institutions uh, are central to overall trying to eradicate financial abuse, which is often a precursor uh, to domestic and family violence. And today, yes, we're absolutely announcing an, an extension of the support that we're providing there. You mentioned some of the numbers in your introduction. The, the scale of the issue, unfortunately, is staggering and clearly has a very direct uh, social impact on mm. individuals in the community, but also, as you mentioned, a large financial impact too. You're in a unique position to the, see the insidious and, and secret side of domestic violence that we can't see. So what does it look like? Well, as you said, uh, the work that we commissioned from Deloitte, we think about 600,000 people uh, were impacted by financial abuse in, in 2020. Uh, the overall direct cost uh, impact to victims and is about $5.7 billion. You mentioned some of that, and, and approximately $5 billion indirect impact on the broader economy. And that's just the financial. And clearly, that's a very large scale. But I mean, how it manifests, and we're, we're very fortunate to be working with a number of partners, but also survivors uh, of domestic and family violence. And we're sponsoring a, a podcast, There's No Place Like Home, and we hear the stories directly through uh, 10 victims. Uh, Financial abuse is certainly part of that, but you hear just the horrifying both uh, grief, uh, which really comes to, to life. Uh, a lot of our support services are centralised and being able to help people in those situations try to achieve financial independence uh, and sustainability. We've also made investments in technology over the last few years to both identify and intercept any messages that might be being sent along with financial payments. You, you're familiar when you're sending a payment to someone else on your mobile banking app, there's a, often a description field. Well, to our horror, we discovered uh, a couple of years ago that there was actually a, you know, a large number, more than 100,000 messages uh, that could be considered uh, absolutely abusive. And so we've trained uh, sort of our technology to help identify, intercept, prevent. And as you would expect, we work with law enforcement where appropriate. Uh, around some of that uh, information and evidence. Yeah, indeed, and these are things that we have heard of before. So we thank you for uh, this this morning and look forward to see what the future plans are. On another issue, you would have noticed this morning that the Morrison government has just imposed sanctions on Russia. Does this have an impact on your business? Uh, do you have a role to play here? Yeah, I mean, yes, yes, we do. I mean, the, clearly the escalation in, in recent days is of real concern to, to everyone around the globe. Uh, yes, we have a role to play in terms of the uh, implementation of those uh, sanctions. Uh, I mean, Russia itself is not a very large trading partner, but clearly uh, the escalation of events, the geopolitical risks, there's going to be real volatility uh, in a number of markets. We expect to flow through impact into, uh, into oil prices and, as you said, uh, sanctions and, and potentially beyond that. So, as you would expect, we work closely uh, with government uh, during times like this to, to understand and, of course, implement the appropriate sanctions and uh, we'll continue to, to, to watch uh, very closely and with some concern, which I'm sure is shared by many of your viewers. And Mr Common, we've he already heard from the Prime Minister that businesses in Australia could expect retaliatory cyber attacks uh, from Russia because of these sanctions. Is that something you are prepared for or worried about? It's certainly something we're worried about. I think if you... Uh, one of our absolute key risks is around uh, cyber and, and, and the threat from that, I mean, clearly that has really emerged and grown globally. Uh, and of course, in times of geopolitical uh, uncertainty, uh, the risk profile around cyber attacks uh, to business uh, go up you know, quite significantly. So mm. it's certainly something that we've uh, tried to um, 
prepare for, but it's, uh, it's, it's a very real and significant risk and it's something certainly that we and, and government and, and many critical industries mm. are appropriately focused on. One final question, because you've been generous with your time this morning, but this is on behalf of the hundreds of thousands of mortgage holders this morning that I know are watching. Will you uh, or are you prepared to hike rates out of cycle this year? Well, as you probably expect, Laura, I wouldn't speculate on, on you know, pricing changes. Thought you might say legal that. Restri restrictions around that, but I, look, I think more broadly, and we covered this quite extensively as part of our results, we, we do anticipate, we're optimistic and positive about the outlook for the Australian economy, and we think, you know, mid this year, uh, interest rates uh, are likely to increase based on the, uh, the current economic momentum. Matt Common, thanks so much for your time.